Sorry about the air conditioner running. So I took a fitting like this and I cut off these threads and I threaded it down into this opening. And I used this little, I put a bunch of duct tape around another fitting that was a little smaller, jammed it in there and it gave me really good leverage to tighten it in there. Tighten it in nice and tight like that. Now, so after doing that, I'm gonna put some Teflon tape, tape around it first for this side. So I'm gonna connect these two barrels up. Oh, we almost, there we go, there, now it's on. Okay, well that was the plan, but this project ended up taking me two years to complete and many failures, so. Here's the first one. Alright, I'm sticking this drum up here just so I can film a little easier and drill a little easier. I'm getting ready to put in the bulkhead fitting, which I'm planning on sticking probably right about here. Um, give me something to push against. Alright, there we go. That's the size I want to stop at. Kind of knock off a burr there. That looks about right. Tie this around here. First off. Lower it down into the barrel. Yeah. Okay. So I dropped the dropped the fitting through and pulled it through. I had it my finger in it and then I was able to pull it out with my pinky. So now I'm gonna trip, trim off this string and keep a hold of it. There we go. Should be able to pull string free. There we go. Now I just need the nut. Check out how bright that bulkhead fitting is. Later in the video, it's pretty uh, oxidized. You can tell how long this project took me. All right, that's on nice and tight. Well, you can probably tell that uh, I abandoned the plastic fitting and tried to go with a metal one. And this ends up not working out very well either, so. Based around these threads. had some problem where this wouldn't thread on all the way. So I got the bright idea to shorten the fitting, but of course uh, this doesn't play out well either. So you'll see when we try to put it together, it doesn't want to work. And now, of course, you'll see that I have trouble getting the fitting out. I'll only 
count off half for that. So since I had trouble threading in the whole nipple, we're going to cut this way short and just weld it onto the top of this barrel um, and then try to thread it onto the second barrel. So we should be ready to weld it on. Let's see, yeah, see how that just disappeared? Oh like, yeah, it's gone. chewed through it, right? Yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. So it's really, it might be hollow or something too. That's you might be right. thinking it's just something that's been rolled up. Is it still burning? Let's try going super light and slow. And So it looks like this part right here is hollow and it's caving yep. in. Yep. So at this point we're thinking oxyacetylene might give us a little more heat control, but that doesn't work out so well either. I'm gonna have, I'm afraid I'm gonna melt your thread knot. Cause yeah, like I'm trying to preheat, but I, you can't just preheat just there and get that going without just this falling apart and melting. All right. I feel much better about this. We decided to forget the nipple connector altogether and just weld around the entire rim of the two barrels, just making it one big tall barrel. Okay, I got some rust preventative stuff. I wiped down with alcohol. So I, I painted it kind of white just to keep, uh, it's so dark you'll get kind of the water will get hot. Now I'm going to paint this sort of sandstone kind of color on there. Just to try to make it match the concrete that it's going to be up against. Probably go, go get another can. I really only want the front part of it to face in the wall. Okay, so I've been working on a fitting that I want to put into the downspout. <clears throat> so this is going to be a, instead of um, tapping in with metal downspout into the downspout, I'm going to try to just use a partial piece. So and this is PVC, and if anyone's worked with PVC before, you know that they never screw together all the way. And so, to try to work on that problem, I used conduit. Um, instead of, since this isn't under pressure, conduit PVC for electrical connections. But it still didn't screw together, it only screwed together about this far. So what I did in order to get it to seat all the way down like that is actually I took a file like this and I filed around the threads quite a bit just to kind of knock them down and I also filed on top a little bit. And when I was done doing that, I used a pencil and I went through here, that's why it looks kind of dirty in here. I, w I used a pencil 
and put kind of graphite all over the top of it. And then after that I used a little piece of wax and just kind of rubbed some wax in there. And that really made it spin smoothly and it goes all the way down and seats all the way down because I want to have this pinch inside of the the downspout pinch inside of that. Now I know the downspout has a little corrugation to it so I'm going to also put some uh, silicone caulk in there but just in case you're ever trying to bottom out some PVC threads like this between two fittings um, you might be able to do it with uh, a file, knock down those threads, a little bit of graphite and uh, and some wax and it seemed to work really well for me. Right there, yeah. Let's see if I can get this screwed in there. Okay, yeah, so I think that's gonna work, but first, what I need to do, so if water's gonna come down through here, I need to cut out pretty much, I, need to cut out, I wanna scoop out the top of this, basically. I yeah, made a little mistake there. I was planning on cutting it right here and right here and folding this one back, but I already cut this through. So I'm going to just take this one out, like this, okay? And what I plan on doing is just folding this one back. So now we'll only have half. That should be all right. Just kind of fold this back like so. down a little bit. Alright. Yeah, so this should grab a little more water, hopefully. What I was thinking of doing was kind of clogging this up, but... Or at least bending this up to catch more that way, but... Once we get it in the in the downspout, I think we'll understand whether we need anything back there. I probably could just put some caulk. I think it'll be about the right thickness, actually. So, check that out here. All right, so I did a little crimp job on this so it can go down and it's not the prettiest thing. But So what I'm gonna do, what I have here is, wait, see this? There's the part I made. Stick this in here, just like this. Right here. Right here. So I put some silicone around this whole fitting here. Do you see what I'm doing? Tightening it up. Tighten it all the way down. It's going to squeeze out and that's okay. So I'm also going to put some silicone around here just to catch the water. So it forces it down through the tube, out and out here. Some of the ugliest things in life do the best job, so that ain't so bad. Okay, see that? So when water comes down here, it's going to hit that dam up here and then come flowing out this way. So there we go. Looks like that's going to be pretty watertight here around the outside.
So our patio is not level, and it's not level on purpose, so the rain can run downhill. Anyway, we're doing a scribe line along the bottom of the form so that we can let it sit even and level when we pour the concrete. All right, so I took the form and I used, um, I cut around the bottom and then I used a block plane to get it really close to my lines that I had scribed. So, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty level here. I checked it with a level, it looks good. Putting down some plastic so that the new concrete doesn't stick to the patio. This is to keep the concrete from sticking to the to the form. So I have this old uh, this little tomato cage is broke, and we're gonna cut it up and use it as kind of rebar to hold the form together. Help, hopefully, keep it from cracking as bad. I like, um, I've mixed concrete like for small batches in a bucket before, a five gallon bucket, and I like this shovel because it's flat and it can get along the bottom and help you mix it up a lot easier. After this, we let it set up for about two hours. Take the, the form out of here, like this. Okay, so the form just slid out. I think I'm going to slip the form over it for a little bit longer. It just seems a little soft in some of these areas, so let's give that a shot again here. Hold that. So it's inside the area. This is after it's cured for a few days. So I put the screen in there and I'm gonna put this fitting on top of it just to hold the screen in place in there. So, and then next what I'm gonna do is drill and, and feed this in there. This is gonna provide me just, you know, air, allow air to escape as water fills. Also the screen is intended to keep bugs and other things from crawling down into the top of the barrel. Give them face so I'm gonna cut it probably right about here so it'll crimp down and go inside this fitting. 
All right, so I got the fitting in there, and um, now I'm going to secure it back again with this. Yes. I think I'm gonna need a longer piece right here of the valve right here. Maybe I'll orient the valve like this or something. But Got a nice groove in there. I guess I'm gonna just try to drill around it. That bit that ruined was probably not was only intended for wood, I guess. It didn't say that on the package. So I'm just gonna plunge around there until I can get it out. Kind of like shooting the old star out at the old uh, amusement park with the, the, the old crappy BB guns. Well, it's kind of working this way. Maybe I should have drilled it out first. Oh no! <laughs> Crap! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna get that out. Uh, well, maybe now we can roll it out. Now all your water's gonna be contaminated. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or the bit went in, Hold but on. I mean, Hold this on. is still there. You're not going to be able to get the bit out. I'll stop now. Alright, so finally I got that in there. We got my other pieces out. I rolled it around and was able to grab all the bit and everything. Smooth this out. Now it needs to be a little bit bigger to catch these threads here. So I'm going to file it down. Come in here. It's going. Bop, bing. Hold that in there. Get this one going. Bop, bing. Get that there. Let's do outside of this one. Looks good. I like that. There's just a very slight incline downhill. So let me uh, do the last two. This one right here, and this right here. Pull these together for a little bit so they can kind of seal up. So this is dried up pretty good. Have my valve in place. Um, a slight downhill slope from the downspout. Have my overflow right here. So, or not overflow, but uh, ability for the air to escape so it can fill up. Right now I'm gonna leave it uncapped. I'm gonna put a valve down here until it first rains to see how the flow goes. Um, my only concern is, is uh, that uh, water will freeze here and, um, and my valve is so far back that this might crack. I don't know if that will happen in the winter here. It doesn't get that cold, but um, it's just one consideration. Just to make things easier, I'm going to put on this hose, little worm drive clamp here, 
just so I can fill up, uh, so I can fill up water and can a little quicker. And that's uh, half the reason behind uh, this whole setup is I'm hoping to speed up the uh, time it takes to fill up a watering can. We're gonna see how long it takes to fill or to fill up my uh, watering can uh, with this one versus my old one. So let's go check out the old one and uh, time it and see how long it takes. Okay, so this is my old rain barrel that I've been using for two years now. You might have remembered this uh, connector that I have from the old uh, my old video. So I thought maybe if I made a double height one, I could fill up a, a watering can like twice as fast. So let's time it, okay? I'm gonna, um, I got a, 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 a stopwatch here. I'm gonna hit go, I'm gonna flip this switch, okay? And we'll see how long it takes. I, obviously, um, it's not totally accurate, but it'll be close. So anyway, here we're gonna say go. And I'll turn it on. Both rain barrels in my chest were totally full because it's been raining a few nights before. And I'll just do it till it maybe hits the rim about right here. We're at 15 seconds right now. Can is half full. This is this is cooking along pretty good. Okay. So right, right when I hit the rim here is 30 seconds. It looks like I just cut it off. All right. So we're ready to do the test on the the new double double barrel. Um, rain barrel. So let's give this a shot. I'm trying to do this with two hands. I'm going to mark, set, go. And turn on the water. And it looks like we're full. Overfilling here. I got it shut off. So 15 seconds. So that's interesting. Like, so got the water can filled up twice the height on this uh rain barrel seems to equate to twice the water pressure um i don't know if that makes sense maybe there's some hydro engineers that would know all, all that stuff but anyway that 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 makes me pretty happy i mean this will fill up pretty darn quick um and uh and i have a double reservoir here so uh, I think it, it's working out pretty well. I think uh, this is a pretty good, took me forever to build this, but pretty decent uh, result. So I appreciate y'all hanging with me for this long, 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 horrible video, but uh, maybe uh give you guys some ideas.